Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince. Welcome back to yet another SCP reaction video. Now, today we react to SCP-4217 contained the Bismarck. Now, I know for certain I have not seen this SCP before. I was actually going to watch it off camera, but then I saw it and I was like, watched like the first 30 seconds of it. I was like, I gotta react to this. This is something I might be interested in doing a reaction video to. Because I usually I watch uh, SCP videos that I know I've seen already. But you sometimes I come across one I know I have not seen before. So this is probably just one of them. I don't think I've ever seen Contain the Bismarck. Before if I have, then Oh well. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go ahead and react to this video in three, two, one, go. The year is nineteen eighty four. Sixteenth no, of February. A pair of researchers aboard a model SM-03 deep-sea submersible are descending into the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Hours ago, they were somewhere just off the coast of France, surrounded by blue sky, the smell of the sea, and the warm embrace of the sun. But now, only cold darkness surrounds them. The depth of the ocean so vast and overwhelming, even light could not escape its grasp. The two-man team are members of MTF Gamma-6, also known as the Deep Feeders, a special task force that specializes in the investigation and tracking of deep sea or oceanic anomalies. Their mission, to locate and investigate the wreckage of a World War II German warship known as the Bismarck, thought by the general public to have gone down in the naval battle with the British in 1941. But the story the public doesn't know is the real reason the pair of Foundation members were tasked with locating the ship's wreckage site. Unfortunately for these researchers, today would be remembered for something far worse than they had anticipated. Nice Radio dash. transmissions recorded by the Gamma-6 duo detailed the events that took place upon finding the Bismarck, designated SCP-4217. The Bismarck lay at the bottom of the ocean partially submerged in the sea floor, but to the astonishment of researchers, it appeared to be perfectly intact, with no signs of damage from its previous naval engagements. Gamma 6 member Charles Miller comments, even after the better part of five decades, this ship is still in pristine condition. There is no water damage anywhere that I can see. Even stranger, no ocean sediment has accumulated on the hull of the ship whatsoever. Prompted to investigate closer, Agent Victor Miller begins operation of the crew's model RV-1 marine probe, oh, an unmanned robotic exploratory drone that allows the researchers to explore the interior of the ship's wreckage. What they found unnerved them, or better said, what they didn't find. Just as the outside of the vessel appeared free of any corrosion or wear, the interior of the ship was just as immaculate. The hallways were clean. The walls adorned freshly painted signs in still legible German. Mm. Even the Nazi symbols painted onto command centers still held no sign of disintegration. It was as if the ship had just come off the assembly line. But strangest of all was the lack of skeletal remains. At the time it was sunk, the original crew of the Bismarck boasted a minimum of 2,000 men. Where were really? Bodies? Continuing the mission, the researchers piloted their unmanned drone down the eerie winding corridor. You know, I don't actually know that much about the Bismarck. I've heard about it time and time again, but never decided to look into it. I should. Along several of the inner corridors of the submerged wreckage of SCP-4217, the crew find large, thick walls of what appear to be made out of a rubber-like substance. 
Soon they find that the large vein-like growths extend throughout the interior of the ship-like tendrils, growing in size the closer the exploratory drone gets to the center of the vessel. All the while, a slight hum sound is picked up by the craft's sonar equipment, echoing from the center of the ship, a rhythmic pulsing. I feel like I have seen a video like this before, but it was probably from a different uh, SCP YouTuber. The crew decide they need to take a sample of the rubber-like substance back to Foundation headquarters for testing. This would be a mistake. Upon cutting into the thick tentacle-like growths, the researchers notice something that fills their stomachs with dread. Whatever substance they had cut into was now bleeding. The team hears a distant rumble growing steadily louder. Suddenly, okay. No, I, ha I have seen this SCP before. I remember. I remember now. The ship begins to move. Shuffling sand and trees strew along the seafloor, clouding the visibility of the ship. Terrified, the pair hurry to try and disconnect the cable attaching the probe to their submersible and evacuate the site. But it's too late. A booming thud shakes the underwater craft as a large shadow covers the glass window of the submersible. Alarm systems go off as cracks start to appear in the glass surface. The pair attempt to pilot the vessel up towards the surface, but they are halted by a strong force pulling them downward. Just as the cracks start to spread across the surface of the glass, a giant shadow looms over the submersible. What? what is that? Screams and the sound of shattering glass can be heard on the recording as the submersible implodes from the pressure of the watery depths. Since that unfortunate incident, Foundation members have recorded multiple occurrences of SCP-4217 attacking civilian cargo ships in the Atlantic, particularly off the coast of the United Kingdom and as far north as the Greenland Sea. Given its Keter containment classification, containment of SCP-4217... Okay, I remember now reacting to the Bismarck. The SCP and Bismarck. It was from uh, the rubber when I first started watching him. That's that's how I know this SCP. Now I now I remember, but I'm still gonna react to this. Different information. Seventeen consists of constant monitoring by Foundation naval forces with the cooperation. It's also been like a year since I've seen that video. In episodes of aggression or an agitated or hostile state, naval forces are instructed to forcibly subdue SCP-4217 through naval engagement. Once enough damage is sustained, SCP-4217 enters a passive state and resubmerges. SCP-4217 is divided into two parts. SCP-4217-A is the Bismarck itself, a Nazi-era warship outfitted with an array there was three. of eight main guns, 44 secondary armaments, and dozens of units of anti-aircraft weaponry. SCP-4217-B refers to the anomalous cephalopod organism yeah. embedded inside the hull of the ship. SCP-4217-B has two large rectangular pupils inside of octopod eyes that protrude from the base of the ship, as well as 12 100 to 200 meter long tendril-like muscular appendages that extend outward from an opening in the stern of the vessel. SCP-4217 is deemed to be classification risk class dangerous with reports of it emitting a mild psionic field within a 20 kilometer radius, confusing psionic anything field. within range and increasing the likelihood of friendly fire among enemy combatants. SCP-4217-A's huh. hull seems to have the ability of inorganic regeneration, as damage incurred from enemy vessels seems to immaculately repair over time. Researchers have observed what appears to be runes or cryptic markings oh. on the side of SCP-4217-A's hull, it is believed hmm. these symbols were part of the original ship's design to bolster the vessel's defense integrity. Though not immediately visible, when the vessel is taking fire, the symbols appear to glow in proportion to the amount of damage being mitigated. Among its offensive capabilities, apart from the standard armaments of a World War II era warship, SCP-4217-A also has specialized munitions of an unidentifiable gas compound that is reported to have mutagenic properties. Mutagenic? Individuals that have been exposed to the gas compound undergo rapid, spontaneous metamorphosis at a molecular level, growing an array of evolutionary attributes, which include the accumulation of reptile-like scales, or avian feathers, in place of skin, the increase or decrease of the number of limbs, digits, or even ocular, olfactory, or auditory organs, and in one reported case, an event where huh. multiple members of one crew were fused at a subatomic level, 
into one functioning organism. The more study into this particular incident is needed. SCP-4217 also has the ability of subsurface oceanic mobility and can submerge itself when not in combat with enemy vessels. Underwater propulsion appears to be generated by the ejection of water from SCP-4217-B's body cavity and reaches a top speed of approximately 30 knots. That's fast SCP-4217 for a ship. undergoes cycles of passive behavior that is periodically interrupted by moments of hostility towards civilian craft, particularly resurfacing and going after transatlantic cargo vessels. It is believed this is analogous to the history and original mission of the Bismarck, Operation Rheinenbung. During World War II, the German Luftwaffe was besieging London in a series of nightly air raids that would be colloquially known as the Blitz. It was the grand intention of the Third the London to Blitz. cut off supplies to the British to limit their resistance to the Nazi war machine. However, what pestered the Nazis most and hindered this effort was the consistent American support provided by the US government in the form of food and supplies delivered to the British via Atlantic trade routes by cargo ship. The German Bismarck and her sister ship, the Tirpitz, the were Tirpins. created for the very goal of stopping these transports of cargo to the United Kingdom, as well as sinking as many hmm. Allied vessels as possible. The year is 1937. In a top-secret effort to make preparations for an approaching war, Adolf Hitler turns to his most trusted expert. I really need to look up the history of the Bismarck. Chief SS officer Heinrich Himmler. Among other projects, Himmler ordered the Anerbe Obscura Corps, a German organization mm. tasked with the procurement and... I remember that that group from watching the Adolf Hitler clone video from SCP Explained a while back. ...and investigation of and although I didn't react to or it. otherwise unexplainable phenomenon to begin the creation of two ships, the Bismarck and the Tirpitz, the former named after the Iron Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who in 1890 unified the German people. These vessels were to be created using recently uncovered technological oddities the Obscura Corps had found in their studies of the occult. Sources of information about the exact creation of SCP-4217 are highly expunged from the record, but bits and pieces did survive, among what little the Foundation was able to collect and in the records of the USSR after their occupation of Eastern Germany, following the fall of the Nazi regime during the Second World War. The earliest mention of SCP-4217's conception dates back to early 1937, when a top-secret shipment of unknown materials labeled Components of Thaumatological Constructs is intercepted by a Foundation Thaumatol. agent like Thaumatol Thaumatol class? undercover in a German shipment center outside of Hamburg. The Foundation agent, Marcus Straub, is instructed to maintain surveillance on the shipment. In 1939, upon near completion of the soon-to-be-christened Bismarck, a second shipment labeled with the insignia of the Obscura Corps is intercepted by Organic the Living agent. Cargo. Only this shipment appears unlike any other. Reports of the massive shipping container holding machinery capable of aquatic life support indicate organic living cargo. Though the Foundation agent was unable to identify the exact nature of the contents of the shipment, Straub reported hearing sounds emanating from the cargo hold. Sounds similar to that of a heartbeat. Just a year later, the Bismarck is seen making its first naval trial run when it experiences a massive electrical discharge just offshore, shutting the vessel down momentarily until power was restored shortly after. Reports show luminescent symbols briefly visible on the hull of the ship. Thaumatological symbols, for the layman, are symbols that embody the study of miracles. Because of this, it was apparent to the Foundation that some occult anomaly was responsible for the strange characteristics of the German vessel, mm. and an order for termination was reached by the O5 Council, the hunt for SCP-4217. In the autumn of 1940, <laughs> under orders of neutralization of SCP-4217, all active Foundation agents presiding in Germany were ordered to converge on the side of the Bismarck to stop the completion of the vessel. But when the time came for the operation, every single one of the Foundation agents vanished. No records of what happened were ever found. No clothing, notes, not even a trace of their existence was left behind. The mission was deemed a failure, and so Maybe the Nazi government got wind of them and just decided to take them out. When attempts to neutralize SCP-4217 became far more difficult after the Bismarck received a full crew of seamen. 
the fully manned and well-equipped SCP-4217 became a menace to both military and civilian craft on the high seas of the Atlantic, at times appearing without warning, seemingly out of thin air. SCP-4217's psionic field obscured it from the new technological advancements in enemy radar systems the U.S. government had in development. The mm. ship became a shadow on the Atlantic, a subject of ghost stories for anyone daring to assist the British government with the war effort. Furthermore, SCP-4217 did not seem to be content with the surrender of enemy vessels. Captured enemy ships were gassed, turning the men into manufactured beasts and then sinking the enemy vessels to the depths of the ocean. Even submarines were no match, on one report describing an attempt to elude the vessel by diving below the surface, only to be entangled by enormous squid-like appendages that dragged the craft back up to the surface before crushing it in its grasp. Mm. Fearing the safety of the public, the O5 Council decided they could not stand by and let more innocent lives be taken. They voted- See, that none of these, these parts were, were said in Rubber's video. So I'm actually glad I am reacting to this because this is some information I don't even recall even being mentioned. To supersede the Foundation's policy on absolute secrecy to notify the British government of the danger SCP-4217 posed to maritime civilians. With cooperation from the British Royal Navy, Foundation representatives joined the crew of HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales to track reports of the Bismarck being sighted off the coast of Scandinavia. In what history books would come to know as the Battle of Denmark Strait, HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales engaged SCP-4217 and a secondary German warship known as the Prinz Jürgen. Confused by the ship's psionic field, the British naval ships experienced trouble identifying the Bismarck and engage in friendly fire before being able to regain control of their armaments, concentrating all volley of fire on SCP-4217. Mm. The attack proves futile, as after the embers and smoke of munitions fire wear off, the sides of the Bismarck's hull appear to vibrate with glowing energy. Mangled metal begins to straighten back into perfect frame, breaches and armor begin to heal before the soldier's very eyes. And all that is left as evidence the ship had ever taken fire is a cloud of steam emanating from the hull of SCP-4217. The water surrounding the vessel begin to boil as underwater tentacles lurch out and capture the HMS Hood, dragging Her Majesty's ship forward. The men aboard frantically try to regain control, but seconds later are met with another crisis. A salvo of artillery shells fired from SCP-4217's guns hit the ship, severing lines and damaging railguns, as a mutagenic gas compound starts to spread among the royal seamen. In mere minutes, the majority of the crew are engulfed in toxic fumes and experience vomiting and convulsions, their bodies undergoing rapid involuntary mutagenesis, including the growth of limbs, the development of fur, Eesh. feathers, and scales. In one report, it was said that multiple victims even fused together to create one single horrifying entity. Those exposed to the gaseous compound were designated SCP-4217-1. The captain of the HMS Hood barricades himself inside the helm, but the resulting instances of SCP-4217-1 overpower the ship and neutralize command. In the wow. seconds that follow, any witness of the horror that the men aboard the HMS Hood experienced is forever entombed in the watery grave of the British vessel as the ship is sunk by a volley of munitions fire from the combined might of the German fleet. Some men attempting to jump overboard and swim to safety are dragged down by their legs by the mutated instances of SCP-4217 and pulled under, lungs filling with seawater, as they scream Eesh. until their breath is no more. In disbelief, the crew of HMS Prince of Wales decides to retreat. In the days that followed, at the bequest of Foundation members, the British Royal Navy launches a full-scale armada to hunt down and neutralize the Bismarck. Though SCP-4217 sustained little damage in the previous encounter, the ship began leaking a black, oil-like substance thought by SCP researchers to be an organic waste product of SCP-4217-B. Mm. The Allied naval forces are able to follow the trail to the coast of France, where under the lead of HMS King George V, British warships surround the German vessel and open fire. This time, they were ready. With approval from the O5 Council, Foundation members provide the British forces with enhanced munitions and armament capable of overwhelming SCP-4217's thaumatological defenses. On the huh. eve of battle, 
It appears to the Allied forces that the psionic field generated by SCP-4217 is too great, as the naval company find it difficult to land targeted assaults on the German vessel. After losing several smaller vessels to the colossal appendages of SCP-4217, Foundation members on board authorize the use of a redacted SCP. It is brought in to deactivate SCP-4217's psionic field. The tide of the battle turns, and after a fierce battle, SCP-4217 becomes immobile and unable to return fire. Relentless, the British continue their bombardment. Like, just finish that thing off. Artillery munitions on the ship explode into a giant fireball, flooding the ship's compartments with the noxious fumes of the mutagenic compound. Its crew members either jump overboard or are engulfed in the cloud of gas. The British vessels capture any survivors and watch as SCP-4217 slowly sinks below the waves, <laughs> down to the depths of the ocean where it would lay dormant for the next 48 years. SCP-4217's 121 surviving crew members were captured and interrogated. Most of the low-ranking German soldiers were released to British custody, 109 of them having their memory wiped by Foundation staff. Twelve remaining members of the crew were sent to Site-23 for further detention and advanced interrogation, and 74 of the instances of SCP-4217-1, the mutated subjects, were recovered and sent to Site-23 for further observation. It was thought that on that day, SCP-4217 was deemed neutralized and no longer a matter of priority. The Bismarck sunk into memory and myth. It was only until the recent resurgence of SCP-4217 that the Foundation saw the need to collect as much information on the organism inhabiting SCP-4217-A as possible. Decades-old manuscripts and ledgers were pulled from hundreds of viable sources. Eesh. From the intelligence then gathered, Foundation members have come to the hypothesis that the entity powering the vessel known as the Bismarck has what is believed to be extraplanetary origin. World War II has uncovered between Commander Karl Reuter of the German Obscura Corps and a Dr. Hans Meyer indicated discovery of an organic life form of unknown origin found in a crashed aircraft near Feldberg Park in the Black Forest mountain range in oh, Germany. I was so about to say France. With Obscura Corps members Otto Schmidt and Dietrich Klossner indicate that researchers were conducting trials on the creature's ability to create psionic fields and to control or confuse enemy subjects within its range. With a letter from Dietrich Klossner suggesting the creature could be used as a power source for an unspecified engine. Further evidence of SCP-4217-B's extraplanetary origin can be found in a 1993 incident between Foundation naval ship SCPS Nemed and SCP-4217. This is the only incident on record where contact was established with the creature classified as SCP-4217-B. On July 22nd, SCP-4217 had reappeared off the coast of Britain, anticipating hostility. SCPS Nemed, SCPS Cessna, and SCPS Parthalon were instructed Parthalon. to close in on SCP-4217. You know there aren't really that many um, oceanic SCPs that require naval battles that I've seen so far. I've only seen this one, the Tides of War, and the Kraken one. I forgot the number of that one. Location, with orders to Not that many SCP oceanic necessary. creatures. However, on this occasion, SCP-4217 did not appear to be after any vessel. It was simply drifting along at sea, no propulsion engines active. Noticing the change in SCP-4217's behavior, Captain Kurt Wegner decided to withhold military engagement and investigate SCP-4217's behavior. Sailing within 200 meters of the Bismarck, the SCPS Nemed attempted radio contact with the German vessel. After repeated attempts at communication, the crew were met with only silence and static chatter. Giving up, Captain Wagner puts down the radio receiver when suddenly, the sound of music is heard playing over the speakers of a ship. The tune is the national anthem of Nazi Germany. The captain hails the vessel again, repeating his attempts at communication. Do you, do you understand me? At first, only static can be heard. Then came a reply. The ominous voice could be heard from the speakers. The captain Damn. hesitated for a moment, members of the crew looking at each other with apprehension. The captain replied, confirming themselves as a ship and then asking if SCP-4217 knew what it was and where it came from. 
What followed was the crew of the SCPS Nemed receiving a video feed from SCP-4217, featuring a high volume of images in rapid succession. Among them were images of German cities, Adolf Hitler's telecast of the 1936 Olympics, an unknown structure in outer space, and in increasing repetition, images of the planet Jupiter, particularly the giant storm on Jupiter known to the public as the Great Red Spot or SCP-2399, as Foundation members know it. SCP-2399? Wait, write that down. That's another SCP I do not know. 20, what was it, 23? 23. Write that down, and I'll do a reaction video to that eventually. Foundation members know it. The transcript of the radio communication between Captain Wagner and SCP-2417 stops. When the video feed begins to focus heavily on images of Jupiter, SCP-4217's responses become more erratic and agitated as it repeats the words storm, cloud, and red. The markings on its hull beginning to light up and the underwater shadows of its tentacles beginning to create whirlpools of displacement under the bow of the ship. A shrill shrieking begins to flood out of the speakers, followed by a high-piercing, high-pitched beeping sound that overloads the communication equipment, causing sparks to fly as crew members cover their ears and hide under control panels. The SCPS Nemed barely escapes as SCP-4217 becomes hostile, using its massive tendril-like appendages to assail the naval combatants, firing its armament in all directions. After a fierce battle, the Foundation naval forces were able to neutralize and subdue SCP-4217. No further attempts at communication huh. have been recorded. To keep the veil of secrecy, Foundation members constructed a replica ship to be sunk and intentionally rediscovered by oceanographer Robert Ballard in 1989. Any recent sightings of the Nazi-era Bismarck are flagged as misidentification by SCP staff. For now, Foundation <laughs> members continue to monitor the behavior of SCP-4217 and protect the public from its existence. Now go check out SCP-1861, the crew of the HMS... You see, the video I watched with Robert did not explain much of that. It was like a 10-minute, 9-minute long video. It did not explain anything that SCP Explained just talked about. I'm actually glad I reacted this a lot more because now I have a better understanding of how the creature works. It's uh, origin, how it operates. Much better, op be much better explanation, I must say, than what I got before. I must check out SCP-2399 in the future, possibly sometime next month, because now with my new uploading schedule, some videos will be already recorded but set up much for much later dates because of my new uh, uploading schedule regardless guys hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video please like and subscribe and all that stuff guys and we'll see you in the next video bye